In the last part of this week's lab, we're going to be looking at how temperature of an air mass changes as it's forced to rise up and over a mountain range. Those temperature changes as air rises and sinks occur as a result of what are known as adiabatic processes. Temperature changes that occur as a result of a change in pressure as you rise, pressure is decreasing. In other words, as you move up to higher elevations in the atmosphere, the air pressure decreases. That allows air to expand as it rises. And this causes cooling, adiabatic cooling. Cooling not due to a loss of heat, but cooling due to a loss of pressure and an expansion in volume. So when air rises, it encounters lower pressures, expanding as it does so, and cooling adiabatically as a result. The opposite is true when air sinks. When air sinks, it encounters higher pressure. This compresses the air. Volume decreases and temperature warms as a result. That warming again is not due to an addition of heat, but is due, occurring due to a change in pressure and volume. As air sinks and encounters higher pressures, that air is compressed into a smaller volume that's associated with adiabatic warming of that air. Adiabatic temperature changes, temperature changes due to a change in pressure, occur at a constant rate known as the lapse rate. When the air is dry, meaning unsaturated, relative humidity less than 100%, adiabatic temperature changes occur at the rate of 1 degree Celsius per 100 meters of elevation change. In other words, when dry air rises, it cools at 1 degree C per 100 meters. When dry air sinks, it warms at 1 degree C per 100 meters. And again, this lapse rate is constant so long as the air is unsaturated, so long as the relative humidity is less than 100%. However, the lapse rate is smaller when the air mass is moist. In other words, when relative humidity is 100%, Temperature change occurs at the wet adiabatic lapse rate. Wet adiabatic lapse rate is smaller than the dry lapse rate. This is because the cooling from lifting of that air mass is partly offset by latent heat being released as water vapor condenses during the lifting process. As you lift air, you cool it adiabatically. That cooling forces condensation. Forces condensation once 100% relative humidity is reached. In other words, once the air mass cools to 100% relative humidity, any further cooling must be re accompanied by a loss of water, a loss of water vapor by condensation and precipitation. As that water vapor condenses, latent heat is released, which partly offsets that latent heat, partly offsets 
the adiabatic cooling. As a result, the wet lapse rate is smaller than the dry lapse rate. Now, the wet lapse rate changes as a function of how much water vapor is being condensed, which is in turn a function of the temperature of that air mass, because air can hold more water at warmer temperatures, releasing more latent heat by condensation, and less water at colder temperatures. So the wet adiabatic lapse rate varies as a function of the amount of condensation that's occurring and the amount of latent heat being released. But a good approximation for the wet adiabatic lapse rate is about half a degree Celsius per 100 meters. If you were to go on and take an advanced atmospheric science class, you would use the actual wet adiabatic lapse rate that varies as a function of the temperature of the air mass. But for our purposes, an approximation of a half a degree Celsius per 100 meters is reasonable. Now, once air gets up and over the mountain, it sinks. And as it sinks, it warms. And it always warms at the dry adiabatic lapse rate. This is because as air warms, it can hold more water. In other words, relative humidity is decreasing as the air mass warms. Condensation is not occurring. There's no condensation. Relative humidity is less than 100%. So the air mass is warming at the dry lapse rate. Again, the dry lapse rate is 1 degree Celsius per 100 meters. So when you lift air, you initially cool at dry rate until 100% relative humidity. Then you cool at the wet lapse rate once you get over the obstacle, you warm at the dry lapse rate. So those are the basic steps in the process. So just to sum up what we've done so far, when we start lifting an air mass, we initially cool at the dry lapse rate. And we do that until we reach 100% relative humidity. At that point, we switch to the wet lapse rate, which is smaller than the dry lapse rate. Then as air sinks, we warm at the dry lapse rate because relative humidity as air warms is getting less than it's getting lower and lower and is always less than a hundred percent relative humidity so these adiabatic temperature changes and the condensation they cause once 100 percent relative humidity is reached explains why the climate is both cooler and wetter on the windward side of a mountain range. If this is our mountain and the wind is going west to east, then this side is the windward side and this side is the leeward side, the side opposite the wind. So the windward side is the side of the mountain that faces the prevailing wind direction. In Oregon, as is the case elsewhere in the middle latitudes of the earth, wind generally goes west to east. As air moves over Oregon, it rises over two mountain ranges, the coastal range and the Cascades. Each time it's forced to rise 
as it encounters that topographic obstacle, causing air, causing air to cool and condense on the windward side of each of those mountain ranges. This is where most of the precipitation occurs. Again, on the side of the mountain ranges that faces the prevailing wind direction. Likewise, adiabatic temperature changes that occur as air sinks on the leeward side of a mountain range explains why it's warmer, why the climate is warmer and drier on that side of the range. As air sinks, it warms, and because warmer air has the ability to hold more moisture, we have no condensation occurring. In other words, on the leeward side, we have a rain shadow. Most of the precipitation fell on the upwind side of the mountain range. This is called the orographic effect, also called the rain shadow effect. Adiabatic temperature changes occurring as air is forced to rise on the windward side of the mountain, cooling and condensing as it does so, and then warming and drying on the leeward side of the mountain range. Let's do an example problem like the one in your lab. Again, we're going to initially cool at the dry lapse rate until 100% relative humidity is reached. We will then switch and cool at the wet lapse rate until we get over the mountain and then allow the wear to warm at the dry lapse rate as it sinks down the other side. How do we know when to switch over between the dry and wet lapse rate? We need to keep track of the relative humidity to decide when to switch from dry to wet lapse rate. So our starting conditions in this sample problem is a temperature of 13 degrees Celsius with 9 kilograms of water per kilogram of air. This quantity is called a specific humidity. Mass of water per mass of air. To calculate relative humidity, we need to know how much water air can hold at different temperatures. Again, these are givens. Air at 13 degrees Celsius can hold 12 grams of water per kilogram of air. Our air actually has 9 kilograms per kilogram. That's its specific humidity. Its relative humidity would be 9 divided by 12, which is 75 percent. So our air mass has a relative humidity of 75 percent. It has 9 grams of water. It could hold 12 grams, 9 divided by 12, 0.75 times 100 percent is 75 percent relative humidity. That means we're going to cool our air at the dry adiabatic lapse rate because we're still below 100 percent relative humidity. Dry adiabatic lapse rate, 1 degree per 100 meters, or 3 degrees per 300 meters. 75% relative humidity, cool at the dry lapse rate. An increase in 300 meters in elevation means our air mass is now at 10 degrees Celsius. Specific humidity remains the same until 100% relative humidity is reached. 
Previously, we saw that air could hold 9 grams of water per kilogram at 10 degrees. 9 by 9 is 1 times 100%, 100% 100 relative humidity. Now, our air mass is saturated. Now, we're going to switch to the wet adiabatic lapse rate. The wet adiabatic lapse rate, half a degree Celsius per 100 meters, approximately, or one and a half degrees Celsius per 300 meters. Once we reach relative humidity, we are cooling at the wet adiabatic lapse rate. Eight and a half degrees, seven degrees, 5.5, 5 .5, four, two and a half, one, negative 0 0.5, and negative two degrees Celsius by the time we reach the mountain summit. All this time, relative humidity is 100%. Water is being lost by condensation. How much water is being lost? We could calculate, but that calculation is beyond the scope of this activity. If you were to take an advanced atmospheric science class, you would calculate how specific humidity changes during wet adiabatic cooling. We're not going to worry about that today. Once we get to the top of the mountain, we need to compare the temperature of our air to the temperature of the surrounding air to determine if our air mass is going to continue to rise. If the air mass is warmer than surrounding air, it will continue to rise even after it's no longer forced to do so by the mountain range. But if the air mass is cooler, than the surrounding air. It will stop rising once it runs out of mountain. It will stop rising once the terrain no longer forces it to. In this example, our air mass is cooler than the surrounding air, so it's going to stop rising at the, at the top of the mountain and instead start sinking down the other side, warming by the dry lapse rate. Because so we bring our air mass down the other side, it compresses and warms, warms at the dry lapse rate of 3 degrees C per 300 meters of elevation lost. At the same time, relative humidity is decreasing You could calculate how much it's decreasing if you knew how much water you had left at the summit, if you knew how much water you had left, in other words, the specific humidity at the summit. But again, to do so is going to be beyond the scope of this activity. Nevertheless, relative humidity is decreasing with elevation loss as the temperature warms at the dry lapse rate down the other side of the mountain. This is because warmer air holds more moisture and then has a lower relative humidity. So as you move down the mountainside, not only are you warming, you are also drying the air, decreasing its relative humidity. Note that we end up at a temperature much warmer than what we started with. This is because we sink at the dry lapse rate always. But we rise at the dry lapse rate for a time and then use 
the wet lapse rate. which is smaller than the dry lapse rate. That's why we end up at a temperature warmer on the other side of the mountain than the temperature we started with.